You are live. Hi. Hello. Hi. Um, it is our holiday dessert event here with the Esselstyn Foundation. And I'm Jane Esselstyn. And I can hardly wait Who are you? to make Who are you? all these desserts. Who are you? I'm going to be a big dessert eater tonight. <laughs> and Esselstyn. And I'm Brian Hart. I'm the executive director of the Esselstyn Foundation. Uh, this is our monthly, uh, we call it Plant Based 2.0, which is a, a session for you to all just learn as much as you can about plant-based eating. And we are here to, so excited to talk about holiday desserts, which of course is uh, one of everyone's favorite sessions that we do. And so I will go ahead and get out of the way. But first I want to remind you, please subscribe to our channel and you'll get reminders when we're doing our monthly up, uh, updates in plant-based 2.0. So, uh, and there will be a recording that will be sent out to all people that registered and uh, it will be on YouTube. And there's so, lots of anybody, anybody along anybody the way watch. every week. There's, the most interesting facts. And what do you call it, Brian? Oh, my newsletter? Yeah, yeah newsletter. if you sign up on the Esselstyn Foundation website for our newsletter, uh, I do a weekly um, sort of tidbit on just various things about plant-based eating. So let me get out of the way. Speaking of facts and updating, um, I am have a little pickleball whoopsie. So she's going to be helping me stir with her left hand tonight and do your own. We'll see how it goes. I'm going to be just fine and my fork works perfectly. Okay. Um, we are doing a number of things tonight. The first thing we're going to do is this beautiful chocolate cake. Hey, this is holiday desserts. And the desserts we're making are a wonderful chocolate cake that we've loved for years as a family and some chocolate frosting to go with it. We have a ton of strawberries that we're going to de try to decorate it with. And we're also going to make something we love to take to like a, a house if you're going to go somewhere over the holiday or drop off a gift for a friend or someone's sick. Don't make this if you're alone. It's because called, it's, it's called quack. Quack. It, it, quack. It, it, quack. It, quack. It quacks. <laughs> <laughs> it's called seed bark, but we put some ginger in it for the holidays. And we're also going to make, um, my mom has a wonderful thing with fresh strawberries and we, oh, it's got a long title. Chocolate filled lime kissed, kissed strawberries and mint or something. It's, <laughs> she always puts every ingredient in her titles. Um, and then the last thing we're going to make is a gingerbread biscotti, which is awesome. So let's just start. Oven is on, ready to go. Um, and for our daughter's cake, or our chocolate cake, pardon me, cup and half of flour. I'm using oat flour because uh, we have oat flour. We don't want me to um, use a lot of oat flour to make our cookbook recently. And so we have that over wheat flour, not for any real reason, it just happens to be that way. And we're going to put three tablespoons of cocoa, get a good cocoa. She has a good chocolatey flavor. And then um, do you recommend any special cocoa? Um, I don't really know. I'm not a cocoa kind of sewer or whatever that would be called. Um, all right, can I have you stir with your strong hand? Whichever one. Um, so that's the, that's the dry. That's the Brian. Can you see? Is this in the way at all? Yeah, that's good. Um, okay. Uh, those are the dry ingredients. We're gonna mix it all up. Try to get the um, cocoa clumps or um, oat flour. Doesn't have too many clumps, but um, get them all stirred together. And now we're gonna add the liquid ingredients. We're gonna add. Uh, I think we're gonna add first the maple syrup. Ooh, How much? Make sure you take them out. Um, two thirds of a cup. And if you if you happen to have this this recipe is in the Plant Strong Cookbook if you have that one. Um, okay, maple syrup. Um, then we're going to add six tablespoons of uh, applesauce. This hand hurts. It's awful to have to stir with a with a cast. It is awful. Um, I was playing pickleball. I thought something was boiling, but it's starting to pour rain here. Did you hear that? <laughs> um, okay. Next thing we're going to do is one tablespoon of white vinegar. And this is so interesting because this is really how we get the, the rising um, going. So in here we have the baking soda, which is the base, or the, you know, the, I'm talking about the pH levels. And now here comes the acid. And in that goes, it's gonna, it'll, it'll do its thing right it's now. It'll start bubbling. Yeah, bubble, bubble, and oh, some vanilla. Bubble. 
Mm. Vanilla. Vanilla. So good. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we do three. I always put triple the vanilla just because I, I like it so much, even though. Now we're putting three fourths cup of water. Three fourths cup of water. Okay, now. You keep throwing it up. Are you tired? Sorry. No, that's right. I got it. I'm left handed and I'll, and I'll happily, happily take it on for a second. Um, today, before we knew we had this coming up tonight, um, we uh, made. You guys doing all right? You did a beautiful job. Thank you. Um, so we're looking for clunk. Jane is the dessert queen. Maven. Clunk. Okay. Quack. Quack. <laughs> <laughs> so today. Earlier today, we made, I'm wearing a dark outfit because we're using cocoa today because I have to go inside. Today, we made uh, these, we made oh, two <laughs> of these cakes because this makes one nine inch round or nine inch square. So the, I already made these two. We're going to, those will be the ones we're working with. But I wanted to also emphasize the fact that you can make cupcakes out of this recipe. So we're going to pour this into the cupcake. Well, usually you pour flour. Flour's in there. No. That was yeah. a dry place. Yeah. See, it was in. Yeah. It's that wet. It's that runny. So we're going to just pour these in. Oh, this is really Can liquid. You the vinegar to this, the balsamic vinegar out of the way? And pour the balsamic vinegar out of the way, please. Pour it. And I'll pour it. <laughs> Sorry. Pour it out of the way. Okay. So we're, um, and you know what's so, you know what's so interesting is we, um, can you hear me when I talked over, Brian? hopefully yeah um what when we um we're making something hold on a second Michael. No, not, yet, not yet not yet not yet i still have a little liquid okay when we were doing a cookbook is this the adonis cake this is the adonis cake from plant strong um this one okay so this is ready to go kind of not even how <laughs> we did this no, that's not, that's not kind of chunky. Um, but this this will work. This will all work. The rise different. There we go. Um, uh, I'm going to add a little scoop from here into here. What I'm trying to say about when we were doing our last cookbook, we were making some cupcakes. And what was so fun is um, the cupcakes. When you make them, they get these little dribble lines in between. I kind of have purposeful price of little dribble lines. Do you see those dribble lines? Yeah. These little dribble lines, when you bake this and you get the cupcakes, but what, what's so fun is to eat these little crispy drops and drips because they are like little microscopic cookies. So what we did for one of our recipes in our last cookbook is we took a cupcake recipe and we used it to make cookies by just doing these little drip 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 so anyway and it, they it, were amazing so we put this in for so 30 minutes at 350. all right Woo. now um no this will this won't be for 30 minutes because it's cupcakes so let's go about 18 minutes on these you guys agree with me on that someone here can agree with me sure sounds good Okay, we've got a form of the cream of light. Um, so to go with this, we want to have, um, what we're gonna go with this is um, a frosting. And the frosting that we love has a foundation of silken tofu. And silken tofu is, I have a box that right here. It is unique in that it is silken, it's firm or extra firm. You can get light silken firm, silken firm, silken extra firm. Don't get soft. Soft is just like yogurt. It's just liquid. This is essential for making a frosting. If you get like tofu in a tub and you put it in a Cuisinart thinking you're making frosting, you're gonna make cat litter. Just lumpy, chunky, granular, nah, nah, nah. Not, not what you're going for. Um, so when I make frosting, I like to take the tofu and do it a little differently than Anne does. Anne likes to just take this itself. Did you, did you call for whole wheat flour in the cookbook, Jane? Yeah, but we used oat flour. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Do whatever you want. Um, uh, 
what my mom does, oh, I, got, I made some oat flour today, so there's a bunch of oats in here still. We're going to have a whole grain for the frosting. I wonder if that's going to... Sorry, I'm getting my oats out of my poison art. All right, so you can use this as a foundation of your frosting, as is, but it's really liquidy. So what I like to do 24 hours ahead or even further ahead is take the tofu and wrap it in like six or eight towels. Brian, can you see here? I'm going to unroll You're going to not back believe them up the, by your, Back them up by your belly. You're not going to believe the revelation that she's about to make. There you go, perfect. Okay, so it's not in one or two or three or four. Oh, that was a Kenneth, Kenneth Square mushroom dish towel. Or five. Jane. Or six. Jane. <gasps> no. Or it's what? seven dish towels. It's been in there overnight. Wait, I want to feel the first. The damp. Yeah, it, it pulls the moisture out of the tofu. Oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, the tofu got just a little stained. No, because these <laughs> from the, the blue towels. towels. <laughs> our tofu is blue because of our dish towels, not because you should eat our dish towels. got it blue. It's been in there that long. So it's it is like it's luckily it's chocolate. It's already on its way to being chocolate. Yeah. So look at it's so crumbly. It's almost like it's Philadelphia or what's it called? Uh, what's that cream cheese called? Philadelphia cream cheese. Yeah, Philadelphia cream cheese. <laughs> okay. Um, Someone asked if you've ever used a to tofu press. Yes, but it doesn't seem to do nearly as good a job as these six towel eight towels overnight. Um, I mean, this even pulled the dye out of the towel. That's we've never seen that before. Uh, that's why you're starting. Yeah. So I um, I tend to use the light, extra firm uh, silk and tofu, and I make sort of little dessert, little mousse things without having to go through seven towels. But mm -hmm. it, it is, wait until you see what seven towels do. Just tofu. Seven towels do. You're right. That's not too far. Okay. So, um, we put in uh, seven towels, and then we put in between half a cup and three-fourths cup of maple syrup, depending on how, really kind of how liquidy you want to have it. And with a liquid sweetener, that's why we like to have, um, um, why we like to have uh, so much of the moisture taken out with the tofu step. So you could put it right back in again. Well, because we don't like to use just plain sugar. So I'm going to quickly blend this together. And then, we're going to add cocoa and vanilla, and it's going to be frosting. And the best frosting you've ever eaten. Mm -hmm. I was going to say what kind of cocoa. Oh. Uh, I don't know what kind I have. I have just some it's organic white. cocoa. I think it's, the... it's just called Equal Exchange. Um, I, I got a great cocoa from Penzi's one time. And it kind of seems like they, they, I don't know, these, these come right, comes right in the bag. I want this to get a little smoother. This thing a little longer. Yeah, it's in chunks. Gonna get, oh, Gotta chunk. unchunk it. And this is, this is, this stuff was really dry tofu. Um, I'm going to add in some, this is vanilla, half a teaspoon of vanilla, and then we put like six tablespoons well, of. Only half? Really? I would think yeah. you'd need to have a lot. Well, this is chocolate. This is a chocolate. So. Oh. Does the tofu have to be wrapped up overnight? Yeah, ideally. Or you can tofu press, press it. And then we're going to add about six tablespoons of cocoa. Four. Five, six. Thank you. I don't Okay, so we're gonna let this spin for a little bit. It is really thick. This is going to stick to the cake well. And I'm gonna. I, I gotta get a little more. Ooh. Without now, it's it's 
This is going to be outrageously good pasta. Okay. It is really thick. Oh, man. This is a different frosting that's in the cookbook, right? Yeah, uh, yeah this one is not in. This is in um, Engine Jew cookbook. There's a similar one in our Prevent and Reverse. No, no. Similar one in our B Plant Based Woman Warrior. It just came out in August. So I actually had this token um, in those dish towels since, let's say, Thursday. I put them in Tuesday morning. Tuesday, right. Tuesday Wednesday. Thursday night. So I think I think it's extra thick frosting here. Um, look at that. Brian, can you see in there? I don't think you can. Look at that. Look at that frosting, you guys. It came to shake off my the wand. I can oh, tell you how it tastes. Tell us how it tastes. It's like, did you ever have snack pack pudding growing no, up? No, no. It tastes like Ambrosia. It was named for the gods. No, I don't. The Greek gods. I'm going to rinse it out because we need that. Oh. <laughs> Can you substitute applesauce for maple syrup? Uh, you can go ahead and try. Let us know. <laughs> yeah, you could. But um, it's... Uh, I right. would substitute this date paste. Look or... at this. Look at that. Oh, my <laughs> Oh my God. God, I can't wait to frost it. I know, we're going to frost soon. Soon. Soon we will frost. Um, soon there will be frosting. Oh. So, um, I hope that there is some frosting left in the And once again, mark. once again, we doubled the cakes to make a double layer cake. Um, we used one recipe to make the cupcakes. We made about 12. So, um, we'll see what we have time to get to all this. In a little bit, but um, so I'm glad that that's that we've got that all dialed in over there. Before we do the strawberries, I kind of want to get the, the seed bark into the oven. My mom is gonna do the strawberries now, but just thinking about it, we want to use the oven cooking time while we have you guys with us. So we've done the chocolate cake, we've done hang the, in there for the done, frosting. Done, because, oh, well, it's it is we'll wait until you see the final product. Why well, it's gonna be gorgeous. Just, I know, I know, we're gonna get to it. But I forget to put this in a second. So we wait very light on dinner. So we would have space. I, I didn't. You did a good dinner. Um, so we're going to get. Did you clean that bowl for the seed bar? I got that. I need that bowl for the. All right. So seed bar is. Uh, doesn't sound amazing, but it is amazing. And it is a great combination of a number of things. And we're going to do about a cup and a half of. of uh, pumpkin seeds and then we're going to do about a half a cup of these are what are these called you guys set seeds. no pumpkin seeds no pepitas no sunflower seeds sunflower. <laughs> strike three we got it just in time and then we're going to do have about a quarter cup of sesame seeds quarter cup and there are five seeds in this, so the fifth seed, the fourth and fifth seeds are going to be um, chia seeds and flax seed meal. Jane, how much how much maple syrup did you use in the in the? Uh... Um, it really depends on how your moisture is. Uh, if you soak the tofu for four days, if you, you may need not more. Not soaked, not soaked. If you drained oh. the tofu. Yeah. Um, uh, Someone wrote. She said between half and three quarters. Yes, yeah. but but I added it probably closer to three fourths cup, if not a little bit, maybe a little bit more. Depends on. I wanted to get it to that texture. I could just barely get it off the spoon. So just use use your sense of what you're going to use it for. If you want to have a pudding, like have it be. Don't don't soak it for as many days as I did. Um, now when I make my little so, so, mousses, I use a third cup to one. Watch your sushi mousses. Yeah, they um, quack. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, so now we're going to add in. We've going by volume. We've done a lot of um, pepitas or pumpkin seeds, and then um, I was about a cup and a half. And then we went a half cup of the sunflower seeds, half cup of the uh, sesame, and then we're doing two tablespoons of chia and flax. 
tan flax help things stick together. Yes, they are good at doing what they do. So, um, do you know what chia seeds do? They expand by seven in moisture. I mean, yeah, so you can get them in your mouth and they blow up all day long. So, now we're gonna add, again, sorry for the inexact amount, but roughly two to three tablespoons of maple syrup. You're not gonna want to use any more than that because too, too much maple syrup here and it ruins the whole, the camera can't see you. So we gotta clear things, there you go. Brian, you see here, we're gonna lay all down. So this is not a true tablespoon, but I'm gonna do about one, two, and a little bit and see how, how we get. Again, we don't wanna to do too much. Everything just sort of gets lightly coated with the maple syrup. And then, oh my, is it ginger over there? Can you grab it? We'll put it in the blue bowl. So we, for the holidays, we like to add in some crystallized ginger. We, we chop it up. And She's kept this hidden from me because she snacks on it. She eats some of it. Yeah. And you can make this even more Christmas, Christmassier or more, more holiday-like, however you celebrate your holiday. Um, these are kind of like twinkly lights. Just let's put it all in. Does date syrup work instead of maple syrup? Give it a go. We just use maple syrup, you guys. Sorry. We have applesauce sometimes. We don't use date syrup for some I don't even know why. Um, it really doesn't matter. They're all I mean they're all they're all, just, all, all the sweeteners. sweeteners do the same thing. They lead you down a dangerous path. That's <laughs> all no, a beautiful sweetened path yeah. for Christmas. All the desserts. Nothing's good or bad. Well it just is. Okay, so we have our we have if you want to make it more holiday-ish, you could put some you know dried cranberries in there or dried cherries. Um, we have another recipe in our. We're, we're I suppose cookbook. for kids, what if you put in chocolate chips? You can put in chocolate chips, or we put in some. I put pecans in, but then Anne goes and takes them. I just go for the pecans, the and she excavates them out. She's a totally like land, what's it called landmine or what's that landmine? She's landmines to strip mine. She breaks them open and pulls them out. Okay, so then this is the really fun part. We take this is a this is a silpat liner, which is like a silicone liner. We use parchment paper or soap cut all the time. So this I can kind of feel. I know what I'm feeling for. It's, everything's kind of wet. It's not like a full of syrup. It's just kind of, kind of, kind of wet. Kind of been um, has no damn, time. damn. Yeah, or it's micro coated. So we're gonna spread, spread this out kind of flat in here. And once you have it spread out, um, try to keep it all in the same island because we're gonna take this little shape. This is a little wee bowl that Kryal, my daughter made when she was probably, Kryal will read. Third, fourth, fifth, sixth, sixth. Which book is this in? This is in the Engine 2 cookbook. I'm excavating bits of the ginger. Back into it? Back in. Okay, and so, um, we have this all, so this is kind of the, a cookie height. You know, what is, what is a cookie height? Probably not a quarter inch, not a half an inch, but it's that, it's probably a centimeter, which is the d distance that we don't use a lot in, the, in our country. Thank you, Canadians, for guiding us. Do Canadians use a metric system? Yes. Yes, 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 yes. I knew that. English. I knew that. Of course. The English. Yes. yes. Um, okay. So. Thank you. Now I take this little shape. Actually, there's a better one. There's another one that you. Our kids made a bunch of these little. This one's got a little more of an edge to it. And this, I just go like this, and I roughly make pucks or cookies out of this. Today, when I got my Merriam-Webster word of the day, which I get, you know, I get the. Um, the word of the day sent every day, along with news and stuff. And the word of the day today. Let me down a rabbit hole of all these Dutch words that have been, that have been influenced in the American language. And cookie is a Dutch word that we use, along with groove and other fun things. So these, Brian, can you see from there? These kind of, can you see the puck? Can you see the puck shape? Can you see the outlines? Yeah, absolutely. So those are going to cook um, as individuals, but in between you have these tasty little like chunks and islands of of snackage and crumble all over. So these are gonna go in the oven again, 350, 
And we're going to cook these um, for about 18 minutes. Do not burn them, but also don't undercook or they won't get crispy. Okay, I'm going to put this in. Wait, we have a minute and 30 seconds. So this is done. So I'm going to put it in in a minute and 30 seconds. And let's go with you. You're going to do your, let's get the chocolate-filled and lime-kissed strawberries. There was no mention of mint, even though there is mint in this. Okay, I'm put this part of my reach. Put this back on now, for you. You could do this in any kind of a blender. The problem was we had the other blender dirty, so we're using this little one, which works. We hope. And yeah, there you go. We're gonna make a filling for these strawberries. And so here is the strawberries for a quick second. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We can, oh, so we have these gorgeous strawberries. Now, it doesn't, I always try and buy organic strawberries just because they are one of the things that is highly recommended. But what you need is nice big strawberries if possible. But Jane has learned that to store strawberries, if you put them in a jar like this. With a lid. With a lid, they last such a long time. Weeks! So we now have uh, strawberries dominating our refrigerator. And the nice thing is my husband keeps forgetting that there's strawberries in the jar so that they, they last even longer because he's not eating them. <laughs> now, what I'm going to do is make a filling to go in these strawberries. And I'm going to take a really ripe banana. The riper the banana, the sweeter. And there is no added sweetener to this. The easiest way to open a banana is not where you think, but to go to the other end and peel it. And then I've discovered that since using this little machine, I need to cut my banana up a little bit. So, Jane. Yeah? Do you need my help? I can't. I'll do it. It's so hard to... If you wouldn't believe what a cast does to make you totally you don't cut it up as much as you pathetic. Oh, you don't look pathetic. You're giving it a go. Do you need much more than that? No. Oh, yes. Where's the cocoa? It's gone. Who sees the cocoa? <laughs> I, 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 I do. I do. There you go. Oh, um, tablespoon of uh, one banana, one tablespoon of of cocoa, two teaspoons of chocolate mm -hmm. And then Lime's yes, I right. have, no, I've got, um, where did you put my, oh, here. This is down. chocolate balsamic vinegar. Now you, for, you can forget this if you don't want to it. But chocolate balsamic is amazing. Just sprinkle on top of just sliced strawberries, um, any kind of, I mean, any dessert, it's, uh, and enhances it hugely. Jane, would you? Um, I have to get the chocolate cupcakes up. How much do I do? Two teaspoons. That's a teaspoon. Is this is this in any book? Yes. This is in the is in be a plant based. No, this is in prevent and reverse heart disease. <laughs> oh, it is. Yes. Yes. Jane. Yes. Uh, I have to get the cupcakes out. They were out, and they needed another little minute, so I. So, can I reveal this behind you before we do that? Jane, look yes. at these yummy, yummy, yummy cupcakes. Oh, oh, they're gorgeous, Jane. Aren't they looking good? Wow. All right, now we have to, um, could you please start this? I don't think this got in right. Yep, yep, yep. strawberries and I will not be a very good strawberry cutter but I'll work at it. So what I my goal is to make these strawberries this is so chunky. Set up. So you see that one now will sit up. Oh, you won't use that. And then I am going to cut out a little piece out of the top. And then I'm gonna keep going. I don't just to make a little I'm not very You're doing a great job. So you see, I've got this lovely little strawberry. 
I did one ahead. Look at these. I mean, these are gorgeous. These are just beautiful strawberries. Oh, but I can, they will sit nice and firm. Okay, well, I'm going to show you this. So this is getting nice and swirled. I'm going to clean the sides down. This, so this is amazing. It just smells like cocoa. But it's just and cocoa. Banana. And banana. And the thing is, if you happen to make it and the banana isn't very ripe and it doesn't taste sweet enough, just add a, maybe a teaspoon of milk. You don't need it. Because when you eat this with the, these beautiful strawberries, it is really just perfect. Do you want a small spoon in which to deliver that, or do you want a bigger no, that would be great. Let's start. What are we doing? Let's start. Filling. Okay. Let me get rid of the... I don't know if you want a bigger spoon. Well, so what are we doing now? We're going to take the... This is a little bit of a pathetic spoon, Jane. Well, I guess it's so pathetic. It's, and it's the, just it's tiny. tiny. And the interesting thing is... This does harden. There we go. I'll never forget, we were somewhere, and there was this huge tray of this these strawberries, and they look so incredibly beautiful. I just couldn't believe it. And then, when we tasted them, I remember coming home, and I... Jane and Brian live next door, and I came home, and I said, and I immediately went to the store and made some, and brought some over to them, and said, look what I've discovered, and I was so excited. Now, there's a, two other things, once you kind of filled these up. Jane, oh, 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 you oh. didn't cut them. You have to cut the bottom. So I see it wrong. Yeah. Well, that's good. It's a teachable moment. Teachable moment. I may have to just eat it. <laughs> okay. Oh, my God. Mmm. But you didn't get any lime. This is what's so much fun. And that is... What are you doing right now? I'm putting a little bit of lime zest on top of each. Wow. And then, not only am I going to stop there, but we'll, we'll try and do a few more. If you're not going to stop there, or you are. No, I'm not stopping because. Is there a mint on there? Is that part of the recipe? My favorite thing is to find what I love with mint is at the end of the mint, there is a little leaf. I already played around with this, so I took some of my end pieces off. I've lost the recipe issue. Are you are you going on your own off on your own now? Yeah, no. This is the recipe. And then there's a little bit. Oh, lime, lime zest or mint leaf. She's doing both. You're getting both. Well, Woo. you always need to have a little mint whenever you can. So it's a good green. And anyway, it's such a Christmassy thing. It's a holiday day. It is very Hollywood seasonal. Can you slide the uh, food processor to your side? Too? Well, we um, let's keep making them because there's more. Well, we've got there's plenty. I think if you can make. With one banana, about 12 or even maybe more strawberries. And you don't have to have the big ones. You could have littler strawberries. But it is a perfect. Can you keep constructing some? Yeah. Um, now, what, how is our time, you guys? 25 minutes. Awesome. We're going to get, we're going to pause on, on frosting this just to, I guess yet. And we're going to get. The biscotti going in the oven because that is uh, something that we we uh we definitely want to get to a there's like a second the move in the middle of it we want to get to so I'm trying to trying to clear the deck a little bit here pardon me so the uh, gingerbread biscotti is a yummy yummy fun one and it has similar ingredients to what we've already made it has oat flour we're gonna put in about oh, actually, here. actually, 
actually starts with oats that are roughly chopped in a food processor or high speed blender. Just roughly cut. Can you see this, right? They're just they're coarsely chopped. They're kind of like look like quick oats almost. So this is a cup of those quick oats um, blurred up, and then you're going to add a. Where one is this recipe? This is in the Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease Cookbook, and. So we have this one cup of old fashioned oats that have been uh, chopped up. And um, someone said, what is pickleball? <laughs> What's that? Someone said, what is pickleball? Pickleball is a, is, a, is a game of tennis and ping pong and um, what else would you call it? I was playing Squash. with my three sons who are amazingly good. And I think I lost the point <laughs> <laughs> when I fell. What? I know. Is this is this Anne cleaned or is this Anne licked? No, I cleaned it. <laughs> okay. So we're gonna put in baking powder, baking soda, and I'm gonna put in one teaspoon of baking soda. Actually, no. Baking powder. I don't know why, because this doesn't really rise much. So and then half of baking soda. Um but this gentle red biscotti is very seasonal, so it's been fun to have this on our minds as something to make for today. So we've got oats, oat flour, baking soda, baking powder. Now we're gonna put one teaspoon of cinnamon, and we've got a wonderful cinnamon from a place called Burlap and Barrel, which we love, which we have a link to them, because they're, they're of single origin spices, meaning their spices come from a, a community. And uh, they they just give those spices. Um, and I also have buffalo ginger, which is another burlap and barrel spice. It they use all the ginger, even the skin, because when ginger is fresh, it doesn't really have a skin. What was the second? Even if it has skin, they grind it up. Eat it. Someone asked, "What's the second ingredient after the oats?" Oats, oat flour, or flour, whatever flour you use, and the baking soda, baking powder, cinnamon dry ginger or brown ginger um, and some cloves. We put in a little bit of cloves, about a uh, quarter or eighth of a teaspoon of cloves. Cloves are pretty powerful. I think we've had this clove, um, uh, what's this called, jar for years because you just don't use a ton of it. Uh, we don't use a ton of it. Okay, stir all the dry ingredients together. This is lovely, lovely, lovely. Getting a good smell on the dry already. And adding all this in here. Now we start to add some other things, the wet things, the wet ingredients. And we have a half a cup. This is a quarter cup, so two of these. How much oat flour was there? Okay. One. About one and three fourths, I think, ish. This is in the Prevent and Retard Disease Cookbook. I gotta get another snip of syrup. Here it is. Um, so half a cup mm -hmm. of maple syrup. We've got one and then, oh, sorry, one quarter, one half. And then we're gonna do a quarter cup of unsulfured molasses. And I've got rare rabbit and I've got blackstrap molasses unsulfured. This has got a peculiar name. I don't like it. It's called Plantation Blackstrap. Mm. Um, so I'm going to put in a quarter cup. I have a quarter cup in here. Oh, it's a nice warm room. Look at that flow. My mother-in-law's from the south, and she's I, I've heard occasionally say, let's move in like molasses January. Um, I'll tell you, that mother-in-law doesn't move like molasses no, in January. Not at she's all. She's one big mover. Mover and shaker and singer and dancer. Mm -mm. Um, okay, and I got and mother my... of Brian. Yeah. Um, okay, so now we're gonna add the lovely vanilla. If you want to have another smell, okay. I'm gonna stop because I just have to stop. show off. But aren't those incredibly beautiful? And they're such. <sighs> Delicious little treats. There you go. Um, okay, 
So we have our molasses, syrup, vanilla. We're supposed to put some golden raisins and some fresh ginger in here, but they didn't have any golden raisins. I think they're kind of supply chain out of them at our store here in Cleveland, Ohio. So I have just regular old granite raisins that we're going to use and put in about two tablespoons or a big handful and a little extra. Love having a little something, something flavor bombs in the. And then here is our ginger. I cut it up earlier, but I knew we'd get towards the end with it. And fresh ginger adds a little va boom, va boom flavor to this. So you stir all this together. And we've had numerous people say to us, now I've made your gingerbread uh, recipe and you don't add enough. Um, you don't add enough. Sorry. You don't add enough fluid to it. It's really dry. And I want to say to them, just keep stirring because all this stuff is going to just keep absorbing, rubbing in, or not rubbing in, but like uh, collecting all the dry ingredients. And the goal with this, the goal with this now is to make this into sort of a log shape. Um, and this is then you put on a pan and you cook it at 350 for about 30 minutes in that shape of a, like a long flat log. Like how biscotti is, looks like it's like, how do you describe like an eyebrow shape? Um, so here we go. This is how thick this is. It's really, this is not like the, the um, cake. This is more like the frosting. So you take it and you put it on a pan in this shape and bake it for 30 minutes. And it'll turn into something like this. So, Anne, let's put that on here. We're going to cook another one. Can you put, can you, can you possibly get that on there? Mm -hmm. Yes. Spoon it on. Spoon it on in this, in this log shape. And then the next move is you take this and you cut it into those individual biscotti. This is too hard. So no, no, no. I got it. This is going to be. Maybe we do it off camera with somebody. No, I, I know. I will skillfully do this, Jane. Do you know what? I will skillfully do this. Okay. Skillfully do so. so. I have another sill flat cover here, and I'm going to put this in the pan and cut these each um, with a, a, a knife that I think is going to be ideal at getting through it. So I'm going to try to do serrated edge. And the serrated edge is too much. I'm going to go to our chef knife. This might just be perfect. Because the way you make biscotti is once it cools, you then can cook all the little pieces. This is really cool. But, um, ooh, it cracked. Oh, well. It just makes for a little yummy piece. You cut these again. Not a half inch, not a quarter inch. This might be more towards a half inch. What would you say? Does that look like a half inch to you, Brian? Probably closer to an inch. This looks like an inch? Yeah. Thick? Yeah. No. Look. I think that it's like a half inch. I'm not going to talk about size. I'm really sorry I had to do this off camera because I did such a good job. <laughs> it looks like a little longer. <laughs> um, that looks great, Molly. We'll get it in there. Oh, do you bake them again? Yeah, you have to, it's because you make them crisp. You want a longer one? Yeah, a little bit longer and flatter. Oh, flatter. Okay. Yeah, kind of like this. So it's just like this one. See how these are kind of like little. Well, I was sent really away. I was. I banished you because I wanted to do this on camera because I wanted to show the size. I will turn. I will give you the front row now because I think people understand what I was trying to do with this next day. So after, so what Anne is doing, what what she's done, we're going to have her come through with her beautifully, beautifully spread biscotti dough. You cook that for thirty minutes, and then after thirty minutes, it comes out like this one. So this becomes this, and then the next move is to take them when they're just cool enough to slice and do this to them. And then you bake them for how many minutes? We get it right here. You bake them um, for like six minutes on this side. And then you flip them in six minutes on the other side. So they get to be crisp. Because right now it's kind of like a, just a uh, soggy, like not soggy, but a cookie. It's not just not, not a crispy. Should, should be a little longer. That looks 
Why? Here. Ah. Uh, no, that's because it'll break. Oh. It'll it, if it's too long, it'll it'll really. Oh, break. that's good to know. Yeah. So this is fine, Mom. You did a beautiful job. Just I, a little, I have no complaints. A little fat. No complaints. No, no. No, not. It, it was a little. You can, there's been some really wide biscotti out there, but I don't know how they cut it without having a fracture. That looks good. Okay, so these are now going to go in the oven. Six minutes each side. Oh, and once again, our timing is perfect. These are going to go. <clears throat> someone wants to taste these little crumbs, they can. <coughs> Wash my hands. Okay. So we're on to the last move now, which is decorating the cake. And the cake right here. Mm. Oh, I don't think I'm going to do two layers because it'll take too long. How much time do we have, you guys? We got 14 minutes. Yeah, let's do this because you know what? And can you? Can you? Yeah, can you talk about the, how it's a variation on the original recipe, Just people are asking. What's the, what's up? What's the question? I'm sorry, I didn't get People are asking about sorry, like, sorry, it's sorry. a variation on the, on the recipe that's in the book. This is a variation on the recipe? It's the same. No, it's the Adonis cake. It's the Adonis cake, yeah. But that's from a different, that, but, the recipe, but the icing recipe is different. Oh, our frosting is, yeah, it's, um, it's, this so is, nice this is in the Engine 2 cookbook and this is in. Different with biscotti. Biscotti or the pudding? Sorry, I'm going to Which book's the biscotti in? The biscotti is in the Engine 2 cookbook. Sorry, the biscotti is in the Preventer's Heart Disease cookbook. Yeah, yes. I'm so yeah, sorry. I'm so sorry. So now I'm cutting some strawberries. I'm going to cut that one wrong. Darn it. I like, I like cutting them in the shape of the heart. How are you doing there, Anne? Can you do it? You want me to do it down the sides? Cry, say it again. Cry. Please do your way thicker. Can't hear you. We're getting feedback from something thicker. My slices or her slices? Yeah, it's spreading. Frosting. Not thick, thick enough, no. crowd. Yeah. No. Go. 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 You're doing a great job. May I do it down the sides now? Absolutely. Okay. Oh, that's a little So, Brian, sorry this is in the way. Here is the C bar. We have it on the cooling rack over here in the corner of the world, cooling down. And we're going to put this biscotti in. And in six minutes, this is absolutely amazing, the timing on this. Jane, you're a genius to have figured it out. What did we do? What did we figure out? Well, the timing. Okay. Jane. I feel like I'm working with like a six-year-old. <laughs> I don't have my whole arm use. No, I know, I know, I know. Wait, so I just. So what I um wait, what do, what are we doing? You have to do the sides. You have to do the sides. Oh, too. I didn't. Like, well, we don't all. You don't have to do the sides. Well, you, you don't have to do the sides. Okay. Well, I really want to get the strawberries on because we don't have much time fun. left. You're good. We're okay. I just need another um, total up. There's like three right here. One, two, three. <laughs> Jane. I know, right? If people keep you asking about hands. Do you want to type that in? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I can't use it. I'm sorry. Because I can't get chocolate on my cast. <laughs> Jane. What? What am I going to do? <laughs> We have so, so much what you do? What are you doing? Jane, look, look how this is going to Okay, okay, okay. It's just a patch of Would you please look in my chocolatized hands? <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be like this for the next week. Okay. <laughs> this is like a little rascal episode. Okay, so um, what I want to do now is I think I'm going to try to do what my daughter is just really the pro at this. But we're going to try to decorate. Oh. You okay? <laughs> you okay? Decorate around. Do you want know more strawberries? Yeah. Can you get one out of the big one out of the jar, please? This this is good. We're, this, we're good. The frosting's good. 
to try to do this around. Crowd, give me some advice. What? Yeah, it's licking everything. Oh, I am sorry. I am covered with chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> That's the grossest one. Is my covering chocolate? What you see? No. Okay, so people, you, you, people who have different ways that they they decorate cakes and whatnot. But um, is this okay, looking crowd? Yeah. Crowd, when I like what you do, would you approve? Don't you put the the green stuff sticking up somewhere? Okay. Can you get a pretty strawberry? Just the whole strawberry. Someone's asking again, what is the chocolate cake in? So the chocolate cake is in plant. Can we get some green on it? Um, plant strong. It's also in our new cookbook, which is a different version of this, a little bit different version. Mmm, that was good. Well, can you know, since you dyed your tofu blue, I have now dyed my sweater brown. Yes. Chocolate brown. Okay, um, let me cut those up. I'm just going to put a little around the edge. I always find that you can, you can hide... You can put blueberries around the edge and just no one sees how things are kind of sort of not, not sloppy, but you know, there's no need to be crazy. It, the truth is on this one, it is perfect. It's frosted perfectly. The cake is perfect. It's, it couldn't be more beautiful. I think a top shot of this, I wish we had a top shot camera here. Um, can you give another one? I'm going to make two more. So we're going to the strawberries don't need to last a month in here because they're nearly gone now. Yeah. Okay. So this from the top is going to look like some sort of ah. blooming flower. Worked. Mm. Mm. All right. Can you see that, Brian? Can you yeah, see that? it's perfect. Wow. So we've got one thing missing. Of our ginger bris our biscotti. But what we have, I'm going to repeat what we've done, and I'm going to say the books in which the recipes exist. Um, we have made... I want to have the strawberries apart. Oh. <laughs> we have made um, a number of things today for this holiday dessert demo. First thing we did was this Adonis cake or the chocolate cake. I say that because we have it in two different places in our cookbooks, which I don't really want to be recipe. This is for reference, not for sale. But if you have a book called Plant Strong, the cake is in there. Um, and if you have Be a Plant Based One Warrior, our chocolate cake is in there as well. A little bit different version. The frosting for this is in the Engine 2 cookbook or in Be a Plant Based One Warrior. And it's um, called House Arrest Pudding or it's our frosting. And the reason it's different is that we pull the fluid out of the tofu before we add our liquid sweetener or maple syrup to it. That's sort of the magic of it being so thick, so luscious. So, I mean, look at this. Look at that frosting. Can't even get it off the handle. It's all over Anne's cast and arm and sweater. Um, so that was the first thing we did. Chocolate cake with chocolate frosting. We made the recipe with you guys here and we made it into cupcakes, which we could easily do the very same thing. Oh, from, we have nut frosting to do some frosting on some of those. We certainly do. Um, the next thing we did was seed bark, and this is the seed bark, and I think it might be cool. cool. Yes, oh, mm. see, they come out like little pucks. And like those pucks, delicate pucks. This timer but is telling us such good pucks. I'm gonna just pull the biscotti out now, even though we have them on both sides, but just because we're at the end of our, we're at the end of our, ta-da, um, I'm gonna put it down here. So what we did after the seed bark is we did the gingerbread biscotti. And this great gingerbread biscotti is perfect for the holidays with all the all the raisins. Oh, just broke that one. Shoot. All the raisins and the ginger and the nutmeg. Not nutmeg. It's got the cloves. There we go. It's it's delicious. And very crisp oh, it once, it, once it cools. 
once these cool and once these cool, they get crispy. These take a while to cool down. That's why I waited to grab one till uh, next because it's cooled down to hold, but it gets crispy then. Here, I can show you. Like, I don't know if you can hear that, but it's just crispy. So we do the sea bark. I have the sea bark. And it's beautiful. Full title. Strawberries. Nope, they're chocolate filled and lime pissed strawberries. Strawberries. With a little bit of mint and a little bit of red sweater. <laughs> okay. We're going to dive into all these things right now. So thank you very much and happy holidays to all of you. I see a piece of, on, on this. Which you see cookbooks, you want? The, which cookbooks the biscotti in? Oh, sorry. I give. I stopped with that. Biscotti is in the Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease Cookbook. This is an Engine 2 cookbook. Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease Cookbook for the strawberries. Thank you. Happy holidays. Jingle. Bye. Jingle. Happy, Jingle. happy Jingle. dessert. Jingle. Subscribe. And don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel below. Thank you.